It's a bit windy today. Stuff blowing everywhere. But anyway, what's in the bag, Phil? Yeah. Now, I have been a bit of an idiot. <laughs> because two of my subscribers have pointed out to me and I've checked it out and they're right is that actually that is normal that hole in the transfer there which is ridiculous because if you look at it it looks bloody terrible it looks like a child poked it in there with a nail or something so that's one that I thought was scrap and actually isn't in here there's another E50 you get it with another very crude hole down there and that one's not scrap either which means I don't have to bother you can't even see the bike now but it means I don't have to bother getting the engine off this which incidentally is seized and horrible and this one which is the later type with the removable clutch cover it's already got the five wire stator in so that means I don't have to bother swapping all the ignition off the other one either so all round that's a win-win situation I'm pleased with that so that can go on the purple maxi and that's the one I'm going to be refurbishing so I've got the crank out of the uh, E50 I was doing the big end seems alright I've cleaned it up as best I can Still a bit of surface rust on it, but it's okay. I've been cleaning it in petrol. And there's the main gear. So, all in all, it's not going too bad. But this is one of the main bearings. It's not very well. Over here we've got the rest of it. So there's the other side of the snap ring. And weirdly, they've used the metal shielded one and just pulled the shielding off on one side. And that is not very well at all in fact it only turn one way it's not knackered <laughs> this is from the main shaft this is the uh, sprocket side absolutely seized for some reason there was a snap ring in with it just floating about in there I don't know if that's supposed to be in there or what but I don't think it is there's your oil seal and I've got another one somewhere where the yeah there's no garter spring in that one. The other one I got out earlier. Oh, it's in my hand. There we are. That one, the garter spring snapped. So that's going to be a fat lot of good. And here's the other one from the main gear, which is also seized solid. So, yeah, they really needed to go. So I'm just... The worst bits of the cases have got petrol in them. Just soaking. There wasn't any gasket material on. So it won't have had... Uh, well, it would have had leaks and terrible things like that. So... I'm just waiting on the bearings and seals, and I did break a couple of um, circlips because they're terrible things. So yeah, next up, Tomos A3. But for now, I'm going to let that main gear soak a bit longer. Not so keen on that noise, though. But look, they're not seized. This could go on for a while. Here we are on a glorious spring day on a bus on my lunch break. I've been driving this round all morning in the sunshine. It's been gorgeous, even though the A1's shut, so it's been terrible as well, timing-wise. But anyway, lunch break now. What's left of it. So time for this. The clutch off the uh, E50 engine, which is going to go on the purple Maxi. Now, this has been running around with no oil in it for a while, I think. The pads on the clutch itself are terrible. Uh, I'm going to keep them in for a bit because they're not quite down to the stops yet. But that will need replacing. I might swap it out of a different engine I've got. Um, but luckily, because this is the newer type where you can actually just get at the clutch, I'm just going to rebuild it as is for now. Um, and then when when the time comes I can just take the clutch cover off rather than the clamshell design engine where you can't get in without breaking the whole engine apart again. However, I say I'm going to run it as is. 
it's not very good at the moment, the clutch bell, because in here you can see all the material and shit that's gathered in there. There's a bit of rust on it as well. That's presumably where the last of the uh, oil in there evaporated. So that needs sanding off. And also, this bushing, I had to tap out of it. I've already started sanding it, as you can see. Um, yeah, it, it's supposed to sit on the shaft and spin freely around the shaft. And sit in there and spin freely there. It's supposed to be independent of the two. And the idea is that oil comes in through... Let's see if I can find one. Can you see that little hole? You probably can't see. There's a little hole about here in between the teeth where the gearbox oil gets in and lubricates the outside of it and then there's more holes in the side of there that lubricate the inside of it and it's basically a cheap way of doing a bearing I suppose um, but unfortunately it's quite tight on the shaft because the shaft has been fouled up and it's quite uh, tight in here and that is because it's been running with no oil and getting really hot so I'm going to give that a quick sanding with some 120 grit and then I'm going to go over with, I think, some 40 or maybe 80 grip. Get all the shite off there and then polish it up a bit more with some 120 grip. And see where we're at. I think it's probably about time for me to give up for today. But you can see I've been at it about five minutes, something like that. That's before all that manky stuff there. And then over here is after. So it's still not a lot better. But it's a start. That's about the best I can get it to, I think. Um... And then the bit that I showed you on here took quite a bit of doing. I did most of that with uh, 80 grit and then the inside of here I've done with 40 grit and I'll probably go over it with something a bit finer afterwards to smooth it off a bit. But it stinks of sort of burning clutch fluid while I'm doing it. So that's what that is. That's just what happens if... I mean this must have been off the road a long time I suppose. So they've let the clutch fluid go down so it, there's only a tiny amount of it in there. And then they've kept running it so it seized lots of bits together inside the clutch uh, and probably not done the engine a great de deal of good either and then when they did finally lay it up probably because it was making terrible noises it's all just dried on and then of course I come along rubbing it off again and it stinks and I mean in the teeth of the cogs as well like the main gear cog as well which is at home there's just epic big chunks of sort of manky solidified oil that you really have to chip off with a screwdriver it takes a bit of doing so i mean this was quite bad and i'm bringing it back to life so i'm pretty pleased about that oh and you can see that oiler hole a bit better there can't you probably still hugely out of focus but there it is so that's the one that lines up with the hole in the bushing to keep it oiled now when i get home i'm gonna have to probably uh, still go over the end of the crankshaft that the bush, where's the bush gone, that this bush goes on to. Um, and I might see if I can sand the inside of the bush a little bit as well with the old biro and sandpaper technique. But that saved me a bit of money on a new bush, which is quite good. You can get them on eBay for about £3.50 or uh, I think YPV spares sell them for about six fifty, something like that. But um, it's just a bit of copper or brass or whatever the hell it is bronze so why not save it rather than spending that money um yeah so this is going back together now i've got the crankcase crankcase halves and everything together already so it's just the clutch the electrical stuff and uh the top end to do so it's getting there i've already started working on the a35 from the blue tomos as well uh, that's pretty much ready to go back together as well. I'm just waiting on some new bolts because the Allen bolts have a couple of them stripped when I was uh, dismantling it. So yeah, the engine marathon is uh, going okay so far, but there's still plenty to do. And just briefly, I'm here in the outside toilet with the beginnings of a working Pook Max ES. <coughs> this is the E50 engine, it's the first one I've rebuilt so I haven't, uh, I didn't film it, plus this has been done to death with these. Uh, Travis Tutorial's got a good video, I know I seem to <laughs> mention him quite a lot but his uh, channel actually taught me most of what I know really, a lot of it. Um, 
or at least gave me the confidence to be able to try and do these things myself. So watch here's one. I'll put a uh, link in the comments in the description. Sorry. Uh, so this one has had new bearings, new seals, new uh, primary sprocket, which is I don't like the. It's a bit plain that I don't like it. Uh, I've replaced all the nuts and bolts with uh, stainless. I've not replaced the studs, but I have got them in case I need them. I have done the cylinder studs, um, but like, as you can see here, the clutch um, screws have been done. All the other screws that I could find, even the stator screws have been done. Um, <coughs> this isn't the original head. I've just put this on here to, uh, to keep the dust out for the moment until I find the original one. So the original one's been polished up, good to go. So yeah, this is all sorted. <coughs> but when I do... One of the clamshell ones, I'll probably film it so you can see, because I imagine they'll be slightly different. The internals are probably all the same, but I just want to explore what the differences are, because you see loads of these type, but I've never actually seen a video of anyone doing a clamshell one. So there we are, E50 about finished. Once I get the head sorted, it should run. Thanks for watching, guys, and thanks for everybody that comments or subscribes. It's nice to know that people are actually watching this, and it makes a big difference. So I'm going to be doing quite a few engine rebuild videos in the nearish future, including Tomos engines, Gorelli, uh, and I'm going to hopefully finish off the Villiers engine as well. And along with these, I'm hoping to produce uh, workshop data sheets, which are like just basically an A4 uh, sheet of paper with everything you need to know uh, for easy reference in the workshop. The first one of these uh, I've done for the Pook E50 and there's a link in the description if you want to download it. It's free, print it off, laminate it, put it in your workshop, then you know all your torque settings and you know exactly how much uh, transmission oil to put in and things like that. Uh, I'm hoping to do more stuff like this on my Google Plus as well. Uh, if you'd like to follow me on that, that'd be brilliant. It's just Phil's Turkey Chasers again. And there's also bits where you can tell us about your uh, projects and bikes, put pictures up, that sort of thing. So uh, the more you get involved, the better. And like I say, there'll be more engine rebuild videos coming soon, including the clamshell design E50 in more detail, because this wasn't a very detailed video, uh, because I've never seen anyone doing one of those. So thank you very much.